high school, I had to do a final project to graduate. And I did a project where I was running from Montreal to uh, Toronto for the Childhood Cancer Foundation. And then I did that alone with my mom and it was a very different run. It was, uh, I didn't think I would ever do it again. I thought that it would be a 13 day thing and it would be over. And um, it kind of sprouted into this amazing thing. It's an impressive feat. Six members of a group called the Montreal Runners ran 4,632 kilometers, yup, from Montreal to the Terry Fox Foundation headquarters in Vancouver. And they did it in 30 days. You led the path, you created the path for us. The only reason that we were, we were out there was because of him. So of course, we had to pay tribute to, to the one that started it all. young boy who was our age about when we did our run and he was diagnosed with cancer so he decided to do the marathon of hope which was a run from the east coast to the west coast of canada and it was his mission to bring awareness to cancer research and collect a dollar from every Canadian. so he began his run and eventually had to come to a stop when the cancer spread to his lungs which gave the halt to the marathon of hope like I was just, I think I started more as a passionate runner that wanted to, to use something of my own to help a greater cause. And that's why I was so attracted to Terry's message and, and what he did. Um, Terry was just an everyday Canadian, right? That's what Foundation presents him as, just an ordinary Canadian who got up and used what uh, what he was good at. He used his long distance running to, to change country. Well, actually did his run to Toronto and then shortly afterwards in 2016, we formed another group and that group was called the White House Runners. And the White House Runners was a group of four. It was um, us three, including another friend of ours, Aiden Arley Jones. And with that team, we had a mission to do a run in the United States for the Terry Fox Foundation to spread Terry's message in the United States where it's not as heard um, where it's not as popular. And then two years later is when we became the Montreal Runners where we wanted to do something even larger. So we all came together and we wanted to do a, a run that was bigger than the Washington run. So we decided to do across Canada. And we found that to Vancouver was the best, uh, the best fit because that's exactly where the Terry Fox headquarters was. And uh, the rest was history. Where Terry had, was forced to stop his run, that's just outside of Thunder Bay. There's a statue there now commemorating him. Uh, it's a really beautiful statue, and, and it's um, leading up to that. They call that a highway, the Highway of Hope. And there's there's a sign everywhere that's, that shows uh, the actually the spot where Terry actually had to stop, but also uh, it just reminds people of the significance of that stretch of road. And then there's the big hill that winds up to the actual statue that goes off the highway. So we were running that for a long time and we did a silent marathon day, that day to uh, commemorate him and we knew we were going to reach that statue. And then I was filming everyone and then everyone was sort of breaking out in tears and then <laughs> Mark and Matt and everyone and I was recording them all. Um, yeah, it was a big moment. You know, you see him up there and he's, he was 21 um, years old when he did what he did. So it, it hit home a lot more. You always think it's it's not going to be somebody in your own family, and then, and then it was. Unfortunately, the last conversation I had with my grandfather, he was, he was determined that he was going to beat it, and even though we both knew, he wasn't. His his thoughts were, "You're going to be involved with helping me out. You're going to be involved with curing me. You're going to be involved with finding a cure." The day we were coming up to the monument. I don't know, for some reason, it was just a really emotional day for, for all of us. Um, that day was actually our, our grandfather's birthday. And I forget which team member it was, but one of them mentioned that we raised our, our $10,000. And that was, that was a crazy coincidence. It was, you know, in, in my book, a miracle, you know, to just to raise $10,000 on that exact day was, was absolutely incredible. And walking up to that monument, you know, 
thinking about Terry, thinking about my grandfather, thinking about both of our grandparents. And, and I think that's what that really, that really broke us all down and it's an emotional moments, very powerful moment. And uh, a day we'll, I think we'll all remember for the rest of our lives. We also visited um, cancer patients at treatment centers and hospitals and to get a view of how it is to suffer from something like that us doing our running and us fundraising is kind of just it's just the pain from that is just the beginning of what they're experiencing so it really humbles you and inspires you to do more than just what you've already done usually it ends up being this ironic twist where they're praising us for doing this challenging run and how we're like mini Terry Foxes but then I switch the thing I'm like no you guys are the ones who are enduring. You guys have the, the strength, more strength than we all have combined. And that we're all standing there with them. And that it's not about us, it's about them. Terry started this in 1980. And what I think what it says on his inscription, on uh, the inscription on his monument kind of says it all. You know, with the Marathon of Hope, he set forth the challenge to every Canadian that we could all meet in our own ways. Whatever way we choose to, it doesn't have to be fit long distance running. We say this all the time uh, when we visit the schools. It's, it's, it could be um, on the track, in the library, on the ice. It could be um, anything. It's, I think it's about, I think what Terry wanted us to do was, was to live up to our potential, maybe, you know, um, indulge our, ourselves, you know, because Things like, like this are not far from impossible. Doing these runs really put things into perspective and, and, I, and I mean that in a couple different ways. For example, one way was when we did the Washington run, 910 kilometers, we thought that was really hard. We thought it was like the hardest thing we had ever done. But then, because that was just a boundary that we put on ourselves. When we did the Vancouver run, which is more than four times that distance, it really puts into perspective how much more you can do if you take those boundaries. Off. These runs have just helped us grow in so many different ways as people, you know, as artists, and definitely as athletes. <laughs>